HRC. I'm the owner of the property. Yeah, he's HRC engineers and surveyors. Um, that's right. And Julia works for me. Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah, we've spoken on the phone, but never in person. That's right. Okay, so is there any question on this person? Oh, sure. In fact, he's got the Chris Wisdom on that. Good evening. We'll call to order the City of Douglasville City Council Legislative Work Session for tonight, which is Thursday, June the 30th. Our invocation will be done by our own Emily Hardaway, Community Outreach Coordinator for the City of Douglasville. After that, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by the Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller, please stand for the invocation. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day you have given us, Lord. Um, I ask that as we enter into the 4th of July weekend, Lord, that you please keep everyone safe um, who's out on the roads um, and that you will be with any first responders um, who have to be out and about this holiday weekend, Lord. I ask that you um, please be with our mayor and council this evening as they go through city business, Lord, and I ask that you please give them wisdom to lead our city. Thank you for them and their willingness to serve our community. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem, for leading us in the pledge, and Miss Emily for the invocation. My name is Rochelle Robinson. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Douglasville City Council meeting, legislative work session. I'm the mayor, and these are just going to be a few protocol issues we'll go over this evening, and then we'll jump right into our meeting. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the City of Douglasville City Council legislative work uh, session. Information tonight that we'll discuss, well, just as a work session, we'll look over the information possibly ask questions, uh, discuss and help us to deliberate and make our decision on next Monday, which is our voting meeting. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under comments from citizens and delegates for you to discuss your business, and uh, that's at the end of the meeting, and you have five minutes to do that. When you come to the podium, please give us your name and address for the record, and if you'd like to speak, there are some speaker cards out on the desk. We ask that you would fill those cards out, hand them to our city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker, come to the podium, give us your name and address, and then talk to us about any business germane to the city of Douglasville. If you're an applicant or someone presenting the information to us, we ask that you would present. There's 20 minutes for those in opposition of an item for uh, voting on and those that are in favor, and each person has five minutes to talk about that item. Um, and you have one opportunity. This is not a debate or question and answer. We're just here to receive the information, deliberate, and make our decision. Um, the meeting will go as following. The person will come forward. The committee chairperson will um, ask questions. You'll do, and, um, answer all your questions to the committee chairperson. Ask us any information you like. We may, myself and council members, may possibly ask questions to help us make our decision. And then we will um, go from there. If you have electronic devices, telephones and such, please put those in silent mode or turn those off until after the meeting. And um, I think that's it. All of, If you have printed material, please give that to our city clerk. She'll make copies and pass them out to us. So now we'll move on with the agenda. There are paper agendas outside, or you can follow us along on the screen. So now we'll move on to the Economic Development Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Economic Development Committee at this time. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. We'll move on then to Finance Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have mm -hmm. one item tonight under finance. Yes, sir. Authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Atlanta Gaslight Company for the installation and recurring fees for a gas facility servicing cooking equipment at the Douglasville Downtown Green Space Concessions Event Space Facility. Mr. Thompson. Thanks a lot. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Good evening. Council. Marcus Thompson, 6701 Church Street, City Engineer. Um, item before you tonight is pretty straightforward. Um, staff is looking, basically, staff is looking to get a head, head start on what could be an extensive uh, process to adding gas uh, services for the kitchen area, area proposed mm -hmm. for the um, concessions and events 
event space for the town green project. Mr. Thompson, this compares to me that in, in my industry, this compares to having to order cabinets before you start footings <laughs> and having to order windows before you start framing. And so I, I understand, I know that I'm sure that Atlanta gas light is just as swamped as the rest of the suppliers. Any question or comment about this, we'll be uh, needing that gas service at some point next year. So just want to get ahead of it and I appreciate you doing that. Uh, there's no objection. I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Tuesday. Oh, you're right. It's Tuesday, not Monday, because it's 4th of July. July the 5th. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. We appreciate right, it. You. That's yeah, all thanks. that we have tonight under finance. Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, um, Mr. Marcus. We'll move on then to the next committee, which is Housing and Community Affairs Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Danley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Item number eight, Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee, chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. No business tonight, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Personal and Organization Committee, that's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We mm -hmm. have two items tonight. Mm -hmm. Item A <clears throat> is to reappoint B. Keith Rollins as Chief Municipal Court Judge for a term of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 and authorize the mayor to sign an employment agreement with him for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And I believe Keith, the coach, uh, I mean, Ms. Judge Rollins is gonna come up and speak. Yes, Does this sir. mean I get to talk? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, you love your job. Well, while we're, <laughs> name, name and address for the record, Mr. Uh, Judge Rollins. <laughs> uh, Fairburn Road Municipal Court uh, Building, B. Keith Rollins, your, your city judge. Mm -hmm. uh, and just for the record, I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I have not made that perfectly clear before tonight, uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve the city, the citizens of the city, and to represent the mayor and council and the everyday job that you're allowing us to do and hope to keep it up. Thank you, uh, Judge. Uh, does anybody on the council have any uh, questions or comments for, for Judge Rollins? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank the judge for the exemplary work that you do for the city and um, just to let those recommendations and testimonials continue to come forward for the great work that you do for us. We appreciate um, your sacrifice of your time and your heart that you put into sitting behind the bench. So thank you so much for all your years of service. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Judge Rollins, just thank you for what you, uh, the work you do in our community and thank you for representing our community very well. Appreciate everything you do and uh, the folks that work under you in, in the court. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. See? <laughs> if it's uh, all right with council, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday, uh, Tuesday. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge Rollins. Um, item B, reappoint Melanie Bradley Davis as assistant municipal court judge for a term of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th. 2023 and authorized the mayor to uh, sign a service agreement with her for that purpose. Uh, Judge Davis. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Judge Rollins does such an amazing job. Um, he has not taken much time off, so I have not had an opportunity <laughs> to sit as of yet, but I stand already willing and able and ready um, if he chooses to take some time off um, to cover the bench for him. Um, so that's all I have. Thank you. Um, Mayor, would you, you have any comments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, Chairman. Thank you to our associate judge as well, um, Judge Davis. We appreciate the opportunity to have you in this position. And um, I'm not sure if the judge will share with you any time, but we may be looking at some things just to help you to stay um, a little bit busy and plugged in. And um, I wanted to announce if you can tell the council about your recent Hall of Fame entry. You have to pull the microphone up yes. and, and tell us about it. 
Um, so I was inducted into the 2021 Indiana Hall of Fame. Um, I played basketball in high school, and so you have to be invited into an anniversary class. And so I was invited into an anniversary class. At some point down in the future, um, I may be invited into the Indiana Hall of Fame. But I did make the anniversary class, and we did that celebration last year due to um, things being closed down for the pandemic. So. Thank you, Judge. And you played for which, which college did you play Southern for? Southern Illinois University. And my coach was actually inducted into the Missouri Valley Conference Hall of Fame this year as well, Cindy Scott. So it was lots for basketball this year for us. Well, congratulations. Thank Hall you. of Famer is a great thing. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank <laughs> You're welcome. All right, that's all I have. Okay, any other comments? Okay, uh, Judge Davis, to uh, the, the home uh, of basketball, the cradle of basketball, <laughs> Indiana, to be inducted into that Hall of Fame is a high honor indeed. So congratulations on that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, if we don't have any more, uh, uh, any other uh, uh, comments, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. Looks Thank you. Good. Thank you, Judge Davis. Thank Madam you. Mayor, that's all I had tonight under personnel and organization. Thank you so much, Coach. We'll move on then to Planning and Development Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. <clears throat> we have two items tonight under mm -hmm. Planning and Development Committee. Item A, consider a request for plat approval for the purpose of combining Ashley Falls Units 3 and 4 for 29.35 acres at Deering Court and Paradise Drive in Landlot 194, District 2, Section 5, Parcels 248 and 48. Parcel numbers 0194, 0250, and 0 one nine four zero two five zero zero four eight application by HRC care of Julie Good and Aaron McCullough. Ms. Reed. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Shayla Reed, Good the evening. Community Development Director, located at 6701 Church Street. This particular development is an existing subdivision. Um, they're completing the, the units of three and four. And um, they have a final plot that has been provided over to staff. We have a number of agencies or departments that have reviewed these particular um, items, as you're seeing here noted. Um, the only particular area that had a concern was fire and rescue. The concern that was had, the state has a provision that says that if you're over 120 units, there must be a second exit or entrance into a subdivision. Um, if you cannot make that second entrance, there's an opportunity of, I believe, nine different um, alternatives that could be given. And so this particular development was not able to make that second entrance, but they worked directly with the fire department to allow for there to be three particular areas that were noted for this particular development. As you're seeing here, the fire marshal is recommending those three conditions be added to the approval of this final plat. And I'll read them. Enhancing the turning radii to meet the local responding fire department requirements. Increase the road widths to meet the local responding fire department requirements and install fire lane signs per section D103.6 of the 2021 International Fire Code. So that 2001 fire code is where that particular provision is being mentioned. So with that, um, staff is recommending approval of this item with conditions. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Thank you. Um, Council, Madam Mayor, are there questions concerning this, uh, this application for Consideration of final plat. Anyone? Yes, uh, Mr. Estes, go ahead. Uh, Ms. Reed, has uh, has HRC agreed to these? Yes, conditions? sir. So there was this conversation was directly with the fire marshal and HRC. Um, originally, they had a conversation regarding whether or not they should be required to have the second entrance. And then after the fire marshal explained, if you can't have the second entrance, there's additional options. And they went through the options, and those are the three that they were able to meet and agree upon. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Others? Comment? Question? Anyone? Okay. So, Ms. Reed, just to make sure that I understand what you're saying, uh, everything on the plat was in order with the exception of Douglas County Fire and Rescue. And these are the three recommendations. Those have been, from the way I, I can see it on the plat here, this size plat, uh, those road widths have been increased. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like to 28 feet. 
And there are what I would call bubble cul-de-sacs uh, that are required ever so many feet for turnaround of an emergency vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then I believe on page eight, there's actually a note concerning signs. Sign. And everyone is in agreement to that, correct? As that a is condition. Correct. That is correct. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank no you. other questions or comments. We will take this up for a vote then on Tuesday. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Thank you. Second item, authorize the city to accept right-of-way deeds from Lennar, Georgia, LLC, granting to the city the right-of-way of Presley Mill Road and Timber Ridge Drive adjacent to tax parcel 005-401-50002. Mr. Thompson. All right, Marcus Thompson, 6701 Church Street, City Engineer. All right, Lennar, Georgia, LLC is seeking to dedicate right-of-way for both Presley Mill Road and Timber Ridge Drive adjacent to a proposed single family development on parcel number 0054015002. De details can be found within the legal description, description and exhibit provided approximately 0 0.288 acres will be dedicated on Presley Mill Road and approximately 0 0.165 acres will be dedicated on Timber Ridge Drive for the installation of sidewalks and construction of right of of, of a right turn deceleration lane. The proposed areas for dedication have been evaluated by city staff. Tonight, I'm presenting this item to you for acceptance into the city right of ways, um, city's right of way system. I have Brian McCraney here, um, development representative, to address any questions or concerns that you guys may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Anyone have any question or comment concerning the item? Yes, Coach Watts, go ahead. Is the question for Mr. Thompson? Uh, either or, okay. I'm not sure. Um, the Benton House that fronts uh, has <coughs> road frontage on Timbridge and Pressy Mill has a sidewalk. Uh, well, actually, it's not the Benton House, but it, it then it connects with the sidewalk of the uh, office building on a corner. And I was just curious if the sidewalks will be along those roads and if they will connect to the sidewalks that are already there. I don't know what's involved with that. Um, I haven't thought to ask that before, but. Okay, well, good evening, Council. Um, my name is Brian McCraney, 3510 Union Church Road, Stockbridge, Georgia, 30281, I'm with Planners and Engineers Collaborative. Um, to answer your question, the sidewalk connections do connect to the existing sidewalks on the um, corner parcel that you're referencing, and then continue to the edge of our property line. Okay, other questions, comments? Okay, is there any reason why uh, we would not be then ready to take a vote on this on Tuesday to accept the right of way mentioned and that is on pages three of five and also page five of five. You see uh, they are shaded as to the amounts that would be given to the city. If there are no other questions. We appreciate you coming in. Uh, Mr. Thompson, you have any problem with any of this? Everything is in order. Okay, we'll take that up on Tuesday for a vote then. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate you coming in. Madam Mayor, that's all that we have tonight under Planning and Development Committee. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Councilman Adams and Mr. Thompson and Ms. Reed. We'll move on then to Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Nicole Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business for Public Improvement and Beautification this evening. Thank you, ma'am. Public Relations Committee, chaired by Councilmember Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Public Relations Committee has no business this evening. Thank you, sir. Public Safety Committee, chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. No business, thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Davis. Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee, chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight in Recreation, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you, sir. Technology Committee, chaired by Councilmember Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Technology Committee at this time. Thank you, sir. Transportation Committee, chaired by Council Member, uh, Council Member Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have mm -hmm. um, one item. Okay. And it's to rescind the authorization of the mayor to sign the Georgia Department of Transportation letter dated on May the 2nd, 2022, regarding adoption of GDOT procurement policy for the procurement management and administration of engineering and design related consultant services and authorize the mayor to sign Georgia Department of Transportation letter dated July 5th. 2022 regarding adoption of GDOT procurement policy 
for the procurement management and administration of engineering and design related consultant services, all for the purpose of removing the name. Marcus, Mr. Thompson, I'm sorry. Marcus Thompson, City Engineer, 6701 Church Street. All right, so if you can recall, the city is currently going through the local administration program, mm -hmm. LAP recertification process with the Georgia Department of Transportation. Part of this application process is to provide the city's procurement policy, which must address <coughs> the federal government laws. City staff has decided to adopt GDOT's policy. This letter was pre previously approved by Mayor and Council and signed by the mayor on May 2nd, 2022. Based mm -hmm. on the comments from GDOT, an updated um, document was requested to be made to item number one of the letter, uh, which have been addressed in the letter before you today. Staff and legal has reviewed the letter. Are there any further questions or concerns? Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, if not, I'd, I'd ask that this item be placed on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. No other items, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Madam um, Transportation Committee Chair. I appreciate yes, that. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. Do we have any other business to come before council tonight from council members? The parade. <laughs> I'm sure we'll make it have an announcement during to talk about the parade that's going to be on Monday, the times and all of that. But that's all I had. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back from Georgia Municipal Association. I know we had lots of classes, and we're probably going to catch our breath from this busy week that we had. Um, so we'll move on then to updates from city staff. Our city attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Colonel Dotson. Staff attorney, Ms. Miranda Jordan. No business. Thank you so much. Police department, Mr. No Detmer. Thank you so much. Uh, city manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton. Yes, ma'am, just quickly, I'll ask uh, Emily Hardaway to make her way up to give details about the July 4th parade and any upcoming events we have. Um, mm -hmm. Also, just a reminder, uh, we did have to close City Hall for one more week, but we are opening on Tuesday the 5th, right after the July 4th holiday. Um, and she will also make mention of the fireworks as well. If okay. you have any questions, I'll be happy to respond. Thank you. Emily Hardaway, 6695 Church Street. Um, so yes, our parade is coming back and it will start promptly at 10 a.m. <laughs> on Monday morning, um, right here in downtown. Um, be starting going all the way down Church Street. Um, and after the parade, there will be activities at Hunter Park, um, which includes uh, barbecue being sold by, I believe, the Shriners, um, as well as activities for kids. Um, and I believe an uh, ice truck um, will be there as well. <laughs> so there'll be lots of fun things at Hunter Park. And that's going to happen immediately after the parade and will last until I believe 3 p.m. Um, for our citizens who are watching, Arbor Place Mall is hosting an event that evening from 5 p.m. to about 10 um, to, for citizens to watch fireworks. And from my understanding from the mall, they will ha also have lots of fun activities and food um, for citizens who attend. For employees, we will once again be doing um, our fireworks uh, festivities at West Pines Golf Course. Um, and there will be uh, Fly High Burgers and Sweet Sisters Ice Cream on hand for employees. And it's a full day, but it'll be a fun day. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Now, our fire marshal, not our fire marshal, but our grand marshal, I know yes. it's a surprise for him if you can tell. Well, he probably wouldn't be listening if you didn't tell everyone about him. <laughs> yes, so our our Grand Marshal is seven-year-old Martin Thomas, and he um, was chosen because he actually saved his family from a fire um, when he was six. Mm -hmm. So he is the Grand Marshal this year, and he will be riding with his grandfather and his mother <laughs> um, in the parade. And so we are excited to have him um, help help us kick off the parade this year. So I think it's gonna be fun and a great event and I hope to see a lot of citizens out, um, out and about. What was his name again? Martin Thomas. Yes, and he, he doesn't know his grandpa's gonna bring him, he thinks for something else and he'll be named as the Grand Marshal riding in the fire truck and stuff. So he, when he was six, six 
he smelled smoke or something and he mm -hmm. woke up in the middle of the night and woke everyone up and saved everyone and the house burned, but everyone was yes. safe. So they made him a junior fire chief. <laughs> so he's gonna be really excited. Yes. On 4th of July. Uh, I do have a question, Madam Mayor, and maybe mm -hmm. I should have brought this up under other business, but what about the scaffolding and the dumpsters and so forth in front mm. of in front of City Hall? Will those be removed before yes. the parade or will the already gone? Didn't didn't notice it when I came in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's all we have. Fireworks Thank for you. West Pines. Yes, for employees, yes. And citizens can go to Arbor Place Mall to enjoy the fireworks. In what time? Dusk? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, dusk. Okay. Very specific? The, okay. <laughs> dusk, yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good well, that's the time. All right. All right. Thank you. If we have any questions for Miss Emily, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, we'll move on. We do have um, a staff report to Mayor and Council on the economic development status of the city of Douglasville. Mr. Aaron Sarowitz will come forward. Good to see you, Aaron. Good to see you. Good to see you, you, Mayor and Council. Mm -hmm. Aaron Sarowitz, 6695 Church Street. Let me check and see. Okay, that's working. Good. Um, 6701 uh, Church Street, Economic Development Manager. I just wanted to take the opportunity tonight to give you um, an economic development update. Um, it's been a little while since we have. Uh, my presentation should be uploaded on your uh, iPad, so if you want to follow along, great. Otherwise, you can just listen and uh, feel free to interrupt whenever you have a question or, or anything like that. I'm happy to, happy to go over that with you. So I was going to start off. We developed um, an economic development division mission and statement earlier this year. Um, there's a lot of words on there that basically say we want to use our partnerships uh, to strengthen um, our relationship with the business community and lift them up and um, assist them however we can. Um, so that's our main, our main goal and we'll kind of talk about a little bit how, how we plan to do, do that, how we're doing it now and how we will do it in the future. Um, so first, we'll start with downtown. Um, that's kind of always the, the, main, the main thing. So you've all met uh, Shay Sterling. Uh, the um, Main Street coordinator. Uh, she stepped in uh, the last six months and done a fantastic job. Um, she's kind of re-energized re the Main Street program um, a little bit. And uh, the main way that she's done that is um, our, our downtown, our summer downtown um, events series, right? So we brought uh, back pop-up shops. Those actually moved from uh, the gap space or mm -hmm. the gaming area um, out onto the plaza. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, I think, 10 or 12 um, vendors there each Saturday and that's been you know we've brought a lot of unique vendors new vendors to downtown um, so we've done a, a great job of that of course food truck Mondays are back um, those have been a hit uh, I think people have have really enjoyed those again um, unique new uh, food vendors for those uh, and and some of our old favorites too of course um, but you know that's done a, a fantastic job as well and we've had good weather this year I think mm -hmm. last year they got rained out quite a bit yeah. um, but we've extended the series uh, this year so it'll end uh, kind of um, at the beginning of the fall um, and so uh, we've we've been blessed with with good weather this summer a mm -hmm. little 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 hotter than we would have wanted but you know we'll, we'll take that and of course training Tuesdays um, on the plaza a lot of um, downtowns are, are kind of moving towards that where they have you know, some sort of physical activity for folks that's free out in their downtown area, and I think that's that's been well attended too. So, is pretty yoga, Aaron? It's is yoga. I think they do a little bit of um, hit, so the high intensity interval training. So it's a little bit. It's there's something for everybody, but it kind of it kind of rotates what the activities. Someone are. said the city manager was moving tires or something. No. <laughs> I see she was moving. She was moving a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, and the so Tuesday nights, there. if you're if you're looking for a, for a good workout, come to, to downtown on O'Neill Plaza. Is the farmers market on here too? Is the it? farmers markets actually run through Keep Douglas So Beautiful. Okay. Um, but that is on Tuesday evenings or Tuesday afternoons, okay. uh, early evenings as well, and I think that's been a hit okay. too. Another another um, blessing of of good weather for that for that event as well. Um, so since May, we've, we've gotten approximately 1,600 people downtown at, from the events and things like that. So um, we're, we're, we're really happy with that. And so um, again, kind of one of those things, it's kind of a two-pronged approach there. So we want to make sure that number, first and foremost, we're bringing people downtown, um, right? But um, through these events, especially the ones that have vendors, we're kind of exposing those vendors to 
downtown Douglasville if they are looking to you know, open up a brick and mortar or maybe open up a second uh, location to their current business. Um, that's a good way to showcase downtown Douglasville and, and how we operate. So a little snapshot of the businesses we do currently have downtown. Um, we have 49 uh, businesses in the downtown district. Um, so the last time I presented to you all, that number was 36. So we've improved. Um, that's always a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of businesses that have recently opened, we have eight new businesses. Um, and you can see those. Um, so Brazilian Wax, Construction Executives, Crew Lounge, Edward Jones, uh, House Sensations Art, Red Velvet Bistro, Sprinkle Boutique, and The Fairy Shop. Um, so those, that's a good mix. It's not all just restaurants, it's not all just retail, it's not all just service, so a little bit of everything for everyone. Um, but the, the, the major thing that um, we're proud of is the downtown vacancy rate. So we do have 49 buildings that we consider uh, in the downtown district. 44 of those are filled. I think everyone kind of has an idea of the handful that are, are mm -hmm. vacant currently. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're still working with biz property owners, business owners, uh, to kind of hopefully fill those um, vacancies. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's kind of a give and take there. Um, but the, the eight, roughly 8% 8 vacancy rate is, is very good. If you look at some of the other metro downtowns, um, that's, that's a pretty competitive rate. Um, and then another um, statistic that we're really proud of is the 98% uh, retention rate that we do have downtown. So businesses that are here are staying here, um, by and large, and um, that is always a very, very good, good sign. So we're happy to see that. Does the Hawkins Video Store count toward the filled spaces or not? Uh, it depends on your version of reality. Um, <laughs> if you're into fiction, yep, it definitely is. If uh, you're into um, nonfiction, it unfortunately is not counted. Stranger things. Yes, yep. Um, and then, so one of the other things to, uh, to kind of strengthen our relationships or maintain the relationship with downtown businesses, uh, we want to make sure that we're in constant communication. Um, so she does a great job of, of making her rounds, doing face-to-face, Having face-to-face -face conversations, dropping in on businesses, see how everything is doing, um, but you know it's not a 24/7 operation, unfortunately. Um, so one of the things that she developed was um, an emailed, um, let's see, a newsletter, right? Um, so we sent that we send that out uh, once every two months to downtown businesses. Um, basically, only only two months because of capacity at this point, um, but that gives an opportunity to let us to let the businesses know maybe what's happening downtown, if there's going to be road closures or events, what events are coming up, if they want to um, you know, participate, those types of things. Um, it also gives an opportunity for them to prov uh, provide feedback to us, um, answer any questions that they may have, those types of things. So it's not just a, a one-way conversation. Um, and and the, the feedback that she has gotten um, from that is overly positive um, from all the business owners that she speaks with. And they, the reason that we want to kind of expand it to, um, to uh, once a month instead of twice or once every two months is the demand. Um, so they've asked us to kind of expand it to, to, to once a month. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking to do that in the next month or so. So kind of expanding out into uh, other areas of the city, not just the downtown area, a uh, snapshot of the, the business climate in Douglasville. Um, we do have about 2,200 uh, 2, uh, businesses that are active um, across the city. And um, one of the interesting things that I've found when you know, we, we run these, um, these things is uh, there are 307 different unique types of business classifications that we have within the city. So we talk a lot about diversity of types of businesses. I think we have that. Mm -hmm. It's just you might not always see it, right? right? So different areas of the city have, you know, maybe that you don't travel to a lot, you know, they have businesses there, right? So that's, that's, a, that's an exciting thing, I think, um, in terms of when we look at the metro area, that's pretty competitive um, for other cities as well. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, just in uh, this calendar year alone, we've had 182 new businesses. Again, that goes to, you know, maybe people running businesses out of their home who have a business license, you know, mm -hmm. those types of things. That's kind of an emerging thing um, that we're starting to track. And uh, you know, it's just exciting. It kind of goes to the business climate that we have here in Douglasville, which is very healthy. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, we have 3,100 um, new housing units that you all have approved. Um, 
the reason that, that I point that out is in terms of business attraction. That is a metric that businesses uh, look at in terms of you know, how many people are in the market. Um, and specifically, more specifically, uh, the density of you know, the population in the, ho in the housing. Um, so within that 3,100 um, of approved, you know, we have a little bit of everything. Um, single family homes, multifamily, you know, that's apartments, condos, townhomes. Um, we have um, 62 and older communities. I was about to say retirement homes, but I think 62 <laughs> and older is, is more acceptable, um, right? So, you know, we, we have a good um, diversity of uh, housing stock as well, which is attractive um, to businesses. So um, we're excited about that. And then um, kind of on top of that, we also have five or 600 more um, approved unit, or, uh, units that are proposed and not yet approved. So we do have a lot, you know, we're getting that number up to where, you know, some businesses want to see it, which is good. Um, currently, um, what we have uh, going on right now in the city, of course, is New Horizons marketing strategy. Um, so this is actually our second attempt. Uh, the first attempt, uh, kind of the, the results were a little underwhelming, I think, um, from what we saw. And of course, that is not something that we want to pass on to the New Horizons community, an underwhelming uh, strategy. We definitely want to, to find an overwhelming strategy, right, to, to make sure that um, we're providing the level of service and the level of amenities um, that they kind of deserve up there, right? So um, from that strategy, we're hoping to find, you know, key areas where we can um, attract development, um, businesses, services, all those types of things that, you know, make um, a community unique and, you know, a place where people want to be. Um, so that uh, RFP closed for the marketing strategy uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we received four bids. And we're kind of in the step one of that process. We're reviewing those. Um, those staff is reviewing those bids. And then um, once we review those, we'll make recommendations uh, that you know, we think the best one. And then uh, we'll build that strategy with that you know, um, consultant. And then we'll implement. And that's what we're looking forward to most is, is the implementation portion of that. We want to make sure that we're doing it carefully, but we also understand that time is of the essence and we want you know, things to happen sooner rather than later. So um, it is a priority there. And of course, we have the um, old mill site uh, redevelopment project. Um, the RFP for that is currently active and is scheduled to close on July 17. So we have uh, um, two, almost three weeks left um, for that. So we've been um, hard at work uh, marketing that RFP. Um, in, in May, we held a familiarization tour where we um, invited about 40 or so um, developers from Atlanta and, and the southeast region. Um, so they all came and, and we took them on a tour of um, some, some key areas within the city, mm -hmm. uh, the old mill kind of being the, the main focus there. So we kind of took them through what, the RF, what, we'll, what we'll look for in the RFP and all of those things. So that was a, that was a great um, kind of event to, to market that RFP in, in the hopes of you know, getting some, some really strong bids. Um, and so this is the second, this is kind of the second go around. Uh, we did put an RFP out uh, at the end of last year, and I think timing was kind of um, the issue with not receiving any bids there. Um, so we're hoping to get some strong bids, but in, in the case that we don't, I think you all have had conversations too. Um, we'll, staff is putting together some, some options that we can, you know, implement. Um, and, and present to you if, if we don't receive any bids. I'm, I'm not thinking that's going to be an issue, um, but we have to be ready for, for anything, right? So i um, very excited about the Old Mill site, and I will say um, our partnership with Habitat for Humanity has been, has been wonderful. Um, they've done a tremendous job of, of marketing the RFP as well and, and kind of bringing a lot of developers to the table and sparking some interest in the Old Mill site um, for, for redevelopment. So um, very strong outlook for that. Um, and then kind of last for the current things is um, Arbor Place Mall. Um, so we're working with Elevate Douglas uh, to kind of approach Arbor Place. Um, the, the management kind of boots on the ground folks uh, initially. We're having some, some issues coordinating a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's desire to meet there, but, you know, just, it, you know, I think it's the time of year. Everybody's either off or super busy or, you know, those types of things. But we're working to, to get um, a date on the schedule to meet um, with the mall manager to kind of see where their outlook is on the mall, um, where they may need some assistance, if we can offer any, um, but really to kind of broker a, a larger meeting with CBL properties mm -hmm. um, to see if, hey, is there, 
incentives that you all are looking for that we can provide and, and maybe help you, or um, you know, what is your strategy, um, so we can really understand how to um, make them all the best it can be and be a good partner uh, with Arbor Place and CBL Properties. Um, so we're, we're in the works on that. Um, there is an update for the Sears building. Um, they did sign a lease with Cons Home Plus, um, which they, uh, I think they sell home furnishings, appliances, and electronics. Um, so that's kind of a, it's an interesting uh, deal that they did. So like I said, they'll be on the lower level of the Sears building, um, but for, they'll have a, a warehouse operating out of there, as well as a showroom. Uh, the warehouse portion is temporary, um, so they're building their own facility, I think uh, a little bit south of Atlanta. Um, and that'll finish up in 2023, early 2023. And when that does finish, they'll take out the, the warehouse portion of that operation and it will just be a showroom. So we're hoping a little, at least they'll, you know, up, upgrade the, the exterior of the building a little bit, um, you know, with, with cons coming in and, and uh, you know, redevelop that a little bit more. Um, so some of the future initiatives, some of the things that we'll be working on, you know, in the next six, you know, months to 18 months um, is really building and refining our business recruitment strategy. Um, so one of the things uh, we're fortunate enough um, with our uh, new GIS uh, system coming online, um, they have a data package that we have um, access to. Um, so really it's speaking the language of the businesses, um, right, and, and learning some of the metrics that they look at. Um, so we can pull that data for ourselves, look at it, analyze it, so we can have a conversation with them about what our strengths are, maybe some op uh, room for opportunity um, there. And it, it, you know, it just goes to help being able to have those conversations with the businesses so they, they know that we understand uh, what they're looking for and, and, and we can be a good partner to them. Um, and one of the things that I think, you know, staff is better equipped to utilize that data and really understand kind of the areas of uh, opportunity um, that we can, we can be advocates for the city of Douglasville in those conversations when we're talking with those businesses. Um, maybe better so than, you know, some consultants we use Nextsite in the past, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think staff can, can better advocate for, for the city and, and really talk to those businesses about the public investment that you all have made in, in Douglasville to kind of counterbalance maybe some of those areas of, of opportunity or growth that we have, um, you know, just to, just to be a, a better sales person, I guess, on behalf of the Douglasville community. And we, we're only talking about ourselves. We're not in um, a queue of 160 other clients, right? Um, so that's, that's really what we want to do is build that strategy, um, you know, get that data and, and have those conversations with the businesses. Um, and once we kind of, that data should go live uh, in July or August, and once we can kind of analyze that, we'll start going out and um, really, you know, pushing hard with some of those target industries that we want to bring, entertainment, retail, you know, uh, restaurants, um, with kind of the list that you all have come up with over, over the years, and then, you know, maybe some, some areas that, you know, some, some folks that we want to bring in as well. Um, and then uh, we're building a new business onboarding process. Um, so, you know, we talk about those 307 different types of businesses that we have and the 2,200 uh, businesses, um, but a lot of those we don't have relationships with, um, right? So to kind of counter, counteract that, um, when there are new businesses that come in, we want to make sure that we're getting in contact with them uh, right away. Um, so we'll be analyzing our business licenses um, a couple times a month. Um, so when new businesses do come in, we'll, you know, reach out to them directly, say, hey, you know, would you like to meet with us? Um, we have, we're, we're currently, um, Community Relations is developing some of the, those materials that we can give them, um, incentive packages, um, you know, just marketing material, that type of information um, that they may be interested in or not. Um, we hope that they are. Um, but then we can learn about their business, right, if we meet with them. Um, they, can, they can learn about the city, what we have going on, what we want to do, and how we can partner and, and become better acquainted, right? Because all, all it is is building stronger relationships with our current uh, business uh, climate, and that's, that's what we want to do. Um, so we're hoping uh, that will, you know, in the next month or so, we'll be able to kind of start executing that as well. Um, and then finally, you know, utilizing those current uh, strategic partnerships that we have. So I you know, mentioned uh, Elevate Douglas earlier. 
um, you know, being more of a unified front with some of our um, community stakeholders uh, in terms of business development, meeting with, you know, different businesses that we want, um, you know, just strengthening that and, and, and showing that this community really does work well together, um, regardless of the organization that we're in. Um, so it increases our capacity, and um, if we know more about each other within this community, um, we, can, we can work better together, right? And so that's, that's really what we want to do. So that's all I have for you. Um, I would love to, to hear from you all if you have any questions, if you, you know, have anything that you'd like us to do or, or any of those things, I'd love to hear it, so. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, I'm not gonna take over Mayor Pro Tem's committee. It's his committee, so I'll yield to you, and then once you open it up for questions, I have a question, but I'll let you take Thank over your committee. You. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And You're I welcome. will do that very thing. I'll open the <laughs> committee up to questions from anybody on uh, council. What? I just wanted to comment, Mr. Chairman, and thank uh, Aaron and staff for uh, putting this together and, and bringing us up to date on what's going on. I'm impressed that, that we do have that many uh, businesses and new businesses coming in, and, and hopefully all of those will be uh, successful. I uh, appreciate you putting all this together. Uh, you had mentioned something about Food Truck Mondays being extended. So um, last year we had four dates. This year, it's more like almost four months worth of Well, food it just truck says here, Food Truck Mondays, June 6th, 13th, and 27th at 5 that, to 8. Yep, that's just for June. That's just the month of June. Just for June. Yeah, okay, we, so each month so, it'll be up there. Yeah, we have, gotcha. that, that was the photo that I grabbed that I could okay. put in, but yeah, okay. we have uh, each month, I think, through September, uh, we have dates. That's great. So, Thank you. Yep. Appreciate that. That's all. Madam Mayor, you have any? I did. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Aaron, get ready. <laughs> um, I'll try to. <laughs> so the last thing you talked about was um, the utilization for strategic partnerships. So do we have any um, area with those four businesses that are not being utilized now to have a hub for the small based business or home based businesses? You know, there were 300 businesses plus that you said were new, and some of them were for home from home. So some people might want a space like we have that shared space down the street. Is there any other area that we're thinking about maybe for that? For developing like a co-working yes, space? Um, you know, that's, we're, we're hoping some mm -hmm. of these redevelopment projects will bring something like that. Okay. Um, but in terms of, you know, available properties that exist and turning those in, yeah, we're kind yet. of limited. Um, you know, the, some of the vacant buildings that we have are, aren't large enough. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and we're hoping to work with a lot of the current building owners that we know of. Um, to kind of get yeah. them in the right direction to kind of, you know, do something with their building. Maybe the development authority, we can talk with Mr. Pumphrey and see sure. if he has a, a facility like Bang Energy or something. Okay, moving sure. on. New Horizons in the area, do we have any statistics that tell us about a grocer and how close we are to having um, that um, service i know that we talked about rooftops and now we have more development coming and it's still coming out the ground i know there are a lot of there are some apartments sure. and the church is doing a development for seniors so do we have a statistics on how many rooftops we need and how close we are or could we have that done yeah well that's what we're hoping um will come from the the marketing strategy okay. um, piece so um since we don't have the capacity for those things totally mm -hmm. um, we're hoping that they'll have um, some sites Okay. Uh, in mind, and then kind of a strategy to, you know, get get a grocery store up there, or, you yes, know, sir. figure out which um, ones in the marketplace would fit and, and where it might go. Yeah, I know because uh, specifically putting that area, we have uh, Jesse Davis Park that we just said right. the $25 million referendum to renovate the park, and so that gateway coming in, I'm sure it will be, it will be stellar for a grocery store. Yep. Um, and then public art in maybe not just the town green, but if we could talk to CAC about, I did see something on our website about a mural competition. Yep. So maybe installations, um, uh, what else, sculptures, and just, you know, driving in Savannah, seeing those different things really mm -hmm. makes a difference, not just... Um, we're doing great with public art and a lot of the things we're doing in the parks now, when you're walking around Hunter, uh, Mill Village, you can read poetry and all of that. And we have those right. little libraries you can pick up books or take or, or bring books. 
but maybe some more installations and sculptures and um, things like that so we can talk to CAC. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And then um, the last thing is the mall. Um, CBL, when we have an opportunity, of course, Madam Chair and I have been trying to get a meeting as well, but to um, talk to them, they've done Cumberland Mall, and yep. so if there's something in that area that we could kind of, I mean, the showroom is great and Sears is going to be used, but yep. just to kind of pick it up a that's, bit. That's what we're hoping will come from okay. these meetings and Yeah, so Cumberland is a model that we can look at. As and well. that's, I think, uh, Cumberland Mall is a good benchmark for mm -hmm. what our place can be. It's the same CBL company. So. Right. All right, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Madam Mayor. Are there any other questions or comments from council? Um, I'd like to add on to <clears throat> what, the, what the mayor said about um, shared workspaces. It, it, um, did, do we not have some commercial space that we're planning on at Mill Village? That's yes. part of that master plan. Yep. And I'm so, wondering if it's possible that we could incorporate shared workspace into some aspect of Mill Village because it seemed like that would be an ideal location because you have, it's a mixed use project, you'll have residences there along with commercial. And so that could be the ideal location for, for a shared workspace. I agree. And I, I hope that's going to be in some of the proposals that we receive. And then uh, to the point about the mall, uh, you know, I know we have to, and it is an excellent point to, to, look at Cumberland as an example, and I think, I don't know if it's a CBL mall or not, but I think Mall of Georgia is, is doing, has done something similar as well. I don't know if that's CBL or not, but that's also a, an example to follow. But I do, I do believe when we, and I understand the, the challenge of getting the mall's management mm -hmm. attention, <laughs> that's the biggest challenge is, is you know, foc getting them to focus, but we do have to uh, approach them in a holistic uh, point of view because where there's, it's not just about the mall itself, but it's about their, the mall's assets, which their biggest one being the hundreds of acres of parking right now that they have, which are underutilized. Yes. Uh, and so how that gets incorporated back into the community, I think we have some leverage uh, that we can work with them because the city is, is planning on improving Douglas Boulevard. So we're giving them something there by creating a nicer road in front of, in, in their, in front of their front door, plus an entranceway, which we're going to create out of right. out of Douglas Boulevard. So I think we have, we definitely have some leverage there that we can get something back from them to, to bring back to the community, even perhaps uh, a way of utilizing a lot of that extra acreage that they have that they don't need, basically. Um, but essentially, as, as to the mayor's point, what they've done in other malls is essentially turned them inside out. Right. Mm -hmm. The traditional shopping patterns aren't the same anymore. We're not going inside malls anymore. People want that outdoor experience. So. Um, and they've got plenty of room to, to make that work. So we have to look at that holistically. The only thing to add to the conversation, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, is that the mall is, Arbor Place Mall does so very well. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, the occupancy rate and their sales, the yeah. point of sales, and so they're not really motivated to change yeah. their model yes. because yeah. people are still shopping. We get that um, ingress or uh, from Alabama mm -hmm. and people just come to the area. So. You know, when we have conversations, the manager's always like, we're doing so well, we, <laughs> yeah. we're top tier, you know, we're, we're, our occupancy is great and we're like at 90%, you right. know, so they're, they're just making money, it's, it's a it's cash cow. You're, you're absolutely right, I mean, and, and that's part of the challenge, mm -hmm. you know, that they, they're in a unique position that they're doing better than most malls out mm -hmm. there because they're a regional mall, they don't have the same competition that a lot of other malls have. There's not a, the nearest malls to them are Cumberland and mm -hmm. I think you have to go to Anniston in the other direction, so yep. they don't have that. But if the management is smart, they also, can look down the pipeline mm -hmm. and see what's coming because they have to understand that they may be doing well now, but right. their challenge is Amazon. your generation, Mr. Serowitz. Yes. <laughs> and the generations that come after because you guys keep shopping online. Right. And on time, little vehicles, robots are going to come and start delivering stuff <laughs> yes. to us. So. Exactly. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not picking on you, Aaron. It's okay. <laughs> um, but get out and shop outside more. <laughs> no, I think um, that's all we have under this uh, committee, Madam Mayor. Um, Thank you, Mr. Sherwitz. Appreciate it. It's an excellent report. Thank uh, you. It's good yeah, to see what, where we are and how we're moving forward. Uh, Madam Mayor, I believe that's all we have under that particular report, under staff reports. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. And thank you, Mr. Sherwitz. We appreciate the uh, report. Now we have um, item 20, which is comments from citizens and delegates. If you sustain the meeting and you'd like to speak to us, we'd love to have you come forward and to the podium, give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to talk to us about anything germane to the city of Douglasville. No takers. 
Yeah. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if not, then uh, we have an executive session. Do we need a recess? Okay, um, I'll open the floor for a motion to adjourn into executive session to discuss negotiations for disposition of real property and potential litigation under attorney-client privilege. So Thank you. Have a motion. Is there a second, please? Second. second. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and second to adjourn to executive session for the aforementioned reasons. Do we have any questions or comments as relates to this motion? Not hearing any. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. nay, the motion. The ayes have it. We are into executive session to discuss negotiation for disposition of real property and potential litigation under attorney-client privilege. We're in executive session. Adjourned into executive session.